Dear students, in this module, we'll be studying about the process of double fertilization, the post fertilization structures and events. So let's just come to the first that is the double fertilization. I have already explained to you the thing students, but let's just recall that process. Now what exactly happens uh, to the pollen grains? Fine. So after entering one of the synergids, the pollen tube releases the two male gametes into the cytoplasm of synergids. Where exactly what happens students that one of the male gamete it moves toward the X cell and fuses with its nucleus to complete the first step of fertilization in order to form the zygote. So you can see here, fine, one of the male gamete fuses up with the X cell to form the zygote and another, it moves on to the central, fine, it fused up with the two polar nuclei and forms the triploid primary endosperm nucleus this thing is already we have done students i hope this thing is clear now as this involves the fusion of three haploid nuclei and that is why it is termed as triple fusion now since uh, two types of fusion that is syngamy and triple fusion takes place in an embryo sac the phenomenon is termed double fertilization now students the central cell after triple fusion becomes the primary endosperm cell Fine, you can see here it becomes the primary endosperm cell, fine, and develops into the endosperm while the zygote develops into an embryo. So we'll be studying that now. That is the post-fertilization structures and events. Now students, endosperm development precedes embryo development, where what happens that the primary endosperm cell divides repeatedly. Fine, let me just show you the structure first. Fine, where what is happening that the primary endosperm cell divides rapidly and forms a triploid endosperm tissue. Now students, the cells of this tissue, they are filled with reserve food material. Fine, it is filled with reserved food material and are used for the nutrition of the developing embryo. So the developing embryo needs some nutrition that is given by the endosperm. In the most common type of endosperm development students, uh, the PEN, that is primary endosperm nucleus, it undergoes successive nuclear division to give rise to free nuclei. Fine. This primary endosperm nucleus, you can see here in the center, it divides several times, fine, to give rise to free nuclei. And this stage of endosperm development is called as free nuclear endosperm. Very, very important students. Fine. This stage is known as, let me just show you with the help of this cursor. So, this stage is known as the free nuclear endosperm. Now, students, the number of free nuclei formed before cellularization, they can vary greatly. Fine. Now, the coconut water from tender coconut that you are all are familiar with, fine, is nothing but free nuclear endosperm only that is made up of thousands of nuclei. And the surrounding that white kernel part student, that is the cellular endosperm, fine. Now, how does this embryo forms? See, embryo develops at the micropillar end of the embryo sac where the zygote is situated. So zygote is situated here and this is the only region where the embryo sac will formed. Now students most zygote divides only after a certain amount of endosperm is formed. Now this is an adaptation to provide assured nutrition to the developing embryo because developing embryo needs nutrition. So that nutrition is given by the endosperm. Fine. Uh, now students the zygote give rise to the Pro embryo, fine. So you can see here the zygote, it divides, fine, and give rise to a structure that is known as pro embryo, fine, and subsequently to the globular. You can see here it keeps on dividing, then give rise to a globular embryo, then heart shaped embryo, and finally the mature embryo having the radical cotyledon and plumule. Now here radical give rise to the root and plumule give rise to the shoot. Now students, a typical dicotyledon embryo consists of an embryonal axis. Fine. See, look here. 
it is the typical structure of the embryo fine so uh, it consists of an embryonal mm -hmm. axis mm -hmm. and it consists of two cotyledon also fine you all can see here these are the two cotyledons fine now students the portion of embryonal axis above the level of cotyledon is the epicotyle fine you can see here this is the epicotyle region now which terminates with the plumule plumule is the stem part students fine so this is the plumule and this can, this is the epicotyle region okay now uh, the cylindrical portion below the level of cotyledon is hypocotyle fine so this one is the hypocotyle okay students that terminates at its lower end in the radical or we can say the root tip fine now very very important thing students now students embryo of monocotyledon fine monocotyledon ka jo embryo hota hai that possesses only one cotyledon so talking about monocotyledon and dicotyledon you have already read this concept in your previous classes now in case of monocotyledon fine it has only the single cotyledon and in the grass family the cotyledon is called scutellum fine that is situated toward one side of the embryonal axis so you can see here students this is the scutellum fine now at its lower end the embryonal axis has the radical and root cap that is enclosed in an undifferentiated sheet that is known as collar haza so you can see here this is the collar haza students which is the undifferentiated sheet now the portion of the embryonal axis above the level of attachment of scutellum is the epicotyle fine above the level is we have already done the epicotyle and the epicotyle has a shoot apex and a few leaf uh, that is enclosed in a hollow structure that is known as coleoptile fine so you can see here this region is the coleoptile listen to me very carefully i am repeating this again students it's very very important epicotyle region that we have just discussed fine now you all know what is epicotyle region students the portion of embryonal axis above the level of uh, cotyledon is epicotyle fine so here epicotyle has a shoot apex and a few leaf that are being enclosed and this region is known as coleoptile i hope this thing is clear to each one of you now moving on to the next next part students that is seed now in angiosperm the seed is the final products of sexual reproduction fine seeds are formed inside fruits now students mature seeds they may be of two types the first one we have is the non albuminous and another one we have is the albuminous now what do we mean by these terms non albuminous seeds have no residual endosperm as it is completely consumed during embryo development for example students we have pea groundnut etc now students albuminous seeds retain a part of endosperm as it is not completely used up during embryo development fine for example we have wheat we have maize we have barley castor sunflower etc now students you all know that what is integument fine so integument of ovules hardens as tough protective seed coats the micropyle remains as a small pore in the seed coat why because with the help of this small pore this facilitates the entry of oxygen and water into the seed during germination fine seed germination is very important students when we sow the seeds into the ground it needs some water and oxygen so how that water and oxygen will enter into that seed with the help of this micropyle fine this is a small pore in the seed coat now students as the seed matures its water content is reduced and seed become dry fine now uh, the embryo may enter a state of inactivity called dormancy so what is dormancy it's a state of inactivity so whenever the favorable conditions are available what are favorable conditions here we can say the adequate moisture oxygen and suitable temperature so finally these seeds can germinate fine whenever they will be getting the favorable conditions my dear students they can easily germinate fine now in the end 
as ovules mature into seed the ovary develops into a fruit that is the transformations of ovule into seeds and ovary into fruits it proceeds simultaneously and students very important thing that the wall of the ovary develops inside uh, in it develops into the wall of fruit and that is called pericarp i'm going to show you this thing with the help of the diagram students now in most plants by the time the fruit develops from the ovary obviously uh, fruit will develop students so how you might have seen that all floral parts they de uh, degenerates and they fall off fine however in a few species such as we have apple strawberry cashew there the thalamus also contribute to fruit formation but students very important such fruits are called false fruits fine now most fruits however develops only from the ovary and are called true fruits fine i hope up to this topic the things are clear students now there are few species in which fruits develop without fertilization fine and such fruits that are developed without fertilization students that are these types of fruits they are known as parthenocarpic fruits fine for example banana is such of uh, it's such an example and parthenocarpy can be induced uh, though the application of growth hormone fine through the growth hormone you all know what is growth hormone it helps in for example we have auxin auxin is a growth hormone in plant so it has been it stimulates the growth fine so we can induce um, this thing this parthenocarpy through the application of growth hormone and such fruits are seedless you might have uh, uh, eat those uh, seedless kind of fruits like we are having uh, nowadays seedless watermelon is coming fine now students um, let me just show you a diagram here you can see here this is that micropyle region fine that opening with the help of which the uh, moisture and uh, the oxygen they enters fine that helps in the seed germination these are the two cotyl then that you can see fine this is the structure of uh, this uh, maze fine these are the structure of seeds basically you can see the thalamus portion of the strawberry fine uh, in, in this kind of fruit what happens the thalamus it contributes in fruit formation but the, such type of fruit they are false fruits fine like the apple this is also a false fruit i hope this thing is clear to each one of you students now finally a seed has been formed students fine now we should know what are the advantage of these uh, seeds to end your spawns fine now firstly sense since reproductive processes such as pollination and fertilization are independent of water seed formation is more dependable fine now students you can see that um, talking about seeds as they have sufficient food reserve so young seedlings are nourished until they are capable of photosynthesis on their own fine because seed is already having that sufficient food reserve so seed exactly utilize this sufficient food reserve until they are capable of photosynthesis by their own now students the hard seed coat provides protection to the young embryo fine this uh, seed coat that becomes hard it gives the protection to the developing embryo now very uh, the most important thing here students that being products of sexual reproduction they now what is uh, the one of the major i think say most important advantage of sexual reproduction is that it leads to variation fine so similarly in this case also they generate new genetic combination now students here is the last topic that is the apomixis fine now all those seeds in general are the product of fertilization that we've already discussed now a few flowering plants such as some species of asteraceae and grasses they have evolved a special mechanism to produce seeds without fertilization so such a good technique it is students that uh, without fertilization we can produce the seeds this process is known as apomixis which is a form of asexual reproduction fine and that mimics sexual reproductions only but this is a type of asexual reproductions now students in some species the diploid egg cell is formed 
without meiotic division or we can say without reduction division and that develops into the embryo without fertilization fine now for example more often as in many citrus and mango variety some of the nucellar cells surrounding the embryo sac they start dividing fine and uh, they start dividing and they protrude into the embryo sac and develops into the embryo now students in such species each ovule contains number of embryos and here comes the next term occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed it it is termed as polyembryony fine which is very very important thing now students uh, this chapter is over now fine so this was all about the sexual reproductions in flowering plants my dear students we have discussed in this chapter uh, the what is uh, the reproduction the formation the structure of flower fine uh, the pre fertilization structure and event microsporogenesis megasporogenesis after their formation the fertilization is taking place the double fertilization with the help of some agencies we have done the process of pollination types of pollination artificial hybridization then we have done the post fertilization event students that is endosperm the formation of embryo its structure the seed the fruit and the apomixis and polyembryony thank you everyone